I am Ines Alea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today I will be showing you how to create this awesome sci-fi gun blast. Alright, so that looks pretty cool. I have some footage for you with link in the description. You can download it and you can import that in After Effects and just put this in a new composition. The first thing that we'll do is change my composition settings to 32 bits per channel for the color uh, right here and then we can get started. So I'll find my positions where I actually release a shot. You can also press L on the keyboard twice and then you're going to see these kind of spikes in the audio and this should be when I pull the trigger. This is going to be some audio and then you can use that as a reference where you will be yeah, shooting your gun. So I will press M on the keyboard, um, well L twice on the keyboard and then you can click on the asterisk on your keyboard and that's going to make a marker just like this. You can go over here and you can make another one, so right over here and just keep doing that for all the shots you want to make. Of course you're only going to concentrate on one of these shots uh, as they are all the same so it doesn't really matter. Um, I have a little bit of issues right here because my green screen was cut off here so the first thing that I will do is create a new layer, um, new solid or actually you can go to composition composition settings and just change your height to something like 800 that's going to make it look widescreen like in most movies and then you can just position your shot to be a little bit better into place and there we go, it's going to look a little bit better as well. So, something like this looks fine. Let's go to that position where we want to do our first gun blast. And we'll zoom in a little bit on our timeline. The first thing that I will do is right click new and add a new solid layer. Now we'll rename this to flare. Click OK and go to effect, generate, lens flare. And of course this lens flare doesn't look nearly as good but we can change the lens type to a 105 millimeter prime and then just click on tile the switches until you see this mode and change it to a screen. Then reposition it to the beginning of your gun right here and we can just increase our brightness something like this. Click on the keyframe for the brightness, go one frame backwards using the page up key you can do so and just set this back to zero. So now you have an initiate blast right here you can move one frame further and maybe change it to something like 50 well 50 is a little bit too low but we can increase it like so and also click on the stopwatch for the flare center press u on the keyboard to reveal all your keyframes right here and i'm going to offset this keyframe one keyframe back well one step back and then we're going to reposition that to the beginning of our gun so right here and then we're going to move it up frame by frame until we want it to go away around right here and we'll set this to zero. Now if we're going to preview this I'm going to press B here and N on the keyboard here so we trim our comp like so and then I'm going to do a simple preview. I'm going to unselect my audio so I don't hear that and I just want to concentrate on the blast anyway. Okay so this looks pretty good as already. I'm going to create a new solid layer right now and I'm going to rename this to lightning. I want my gun to give it some kind of lightning. Uh, so we're going to search in the effects and preset for advanced lightning right here. We're going to apply that to that solid layer. Now we'll have something like this. We can change the lightning type to a strike. Move the beginning right here to the beginning of your gun. You can also unselect your flare so you have a better understanding of where the beginning is and then you can move this out of frame and just try to give it like that feeling so it looks like 3D. And there we go. You can also click on these stopwatches right here and move one frame back and move it down a little bit like so. And again frame by frame until you don't want it anymore. So around here I want it to disappear. I will do this in the expert settings. You can open that up. You can increase the uh, complexity if you want to to get something more like this. And also go into the glow settings and just set this to opacity something like 10. So you don't have any opacity in there. So we don't need that actually. So we can also go in the core settings and increase the size a little bit because we actually want a very big lightning bolt like so. Especially over here you can lower the complexity a bit and increase the size a bit like so. And then for the core drain we can play with that as well. Uh, we can use that later on but maybe we're going to keep it like so. We can also go into DK and play a little bit with these settings right here. Set the complexity at 7 
And there we go. So this is something that I like. Let's play a little bit more with all these settings. The fork strength can be something like this variation doesn't really matter that much we can keep it around 30 and there we have it so we'll press u on the keyboard and also create a new keyframe for our core drain right here press u on the keyboard again so you can actually see that keyframe for the core drain and right here at the end i'm going to set that keyframe right here press one uh, once on the page down key and then just set this at 100 so it actually I'm going to put it one step back so you actually see it draining like so. So this looks a little bit better. And then right here I want it to be disappeared. So I'm going to press Ctrl Shift D and then we can delete this part. And we can also trim this area a little bit. So right here we have our burst. And do the same thing and just trim it down like so. And now we have our lightning bolt as you can see right here. And if you're going to combine this with our lens flare, you're going to get something like this, which looks very cool. Okay, of course you wanna give it some color. So I'm gonna click on my lens flare and I'm going to add an effect, color correction, curves. Right here, I'm going to the blue channel and I'm going to increase my blue color. Then go into the red channel and take away the red so we get a more cyan look. Go into the greens and add an S curve so we get some more contrast in these colors. I'm going to copy these curves for now but currently I'm not going to paste them on my lightning because I don't really have any glow and glow is going to add up for your color. I'm going to use the perfect glow which you can download on our website at the freebies page just import it. I also have a video on how to import presets and just drag it onto your lightning. You're going to get something like this and of course this is not exactly what we're looking at so I'm going to uh, search as well for solid composite and I'm going to put this on top of my glow and set this to black and there we go so what this is going to do is it's going to add everything that's actually transparent because the lightning effect just makes my layer transparent it's going to make it black and we actually want it to be black because glow is not too good with a transparent background. You're going to see that if I don't have this, you're going to see some right here, we have some black issues here. And if I'm going to add a solid composite, it's going to fix that with a screen. And there you go, so now we have a nice glowing lightning effect uh, like so. So this looks a lot better than the previous one. And then right here, we can also play a little bit with the threshold of our first glow like so, and maybe get something like this. Click on your intensity and maybe change it to 0.04 we get something like this and we can even set this to zero and maybe this can be a little bit higher 0.08 and there we go just increase the threshold again a little bit okay there we go so play around with all these settings uh, maybe we can go for one and there we go so now we have a little bit of glow in our lightning and the only thing you want to do is copy the flare curves right here to our lightning and you can see right here we don't have a lot of detail so you can also uh, play with the keyframe of your threshold so like right here you can click on the threshold for the glow and then go once frame backwards and just increase it until you can see something in your lightning as you desire something like this looks pretty good and then right here we have less glow and it's uh, yeah a little bit better fit for our lightning effect so let's do another preview and there we have some color in our flare. This looks pretty good as well. What you can do as well is add some sparks. We are going to release a pack really soon. So uh, maybe a link will be in the description by the time you are watching this video. If you are not you, uh, you can yeah uh, make your own sparks or wait for that to come out. And then you can add that on top as well. To give you a little idea, I just imported it right here. And I'm going to put my sparks right here. Set this to screen and let it play like so and I'm also going to right click transform flip horizontal and just reposition it like so okay there we go so this looks really cool immediately and of course you can click on these and go to effect color correction hue and saturation and just change these colors to be something like a nice blue color this is a little bit too much actually. I'm going to lower the hue and saturation right here. So I'm going to lower the saturation a little bit. Okay, there we go. So more towards the white color. And let's see what this is going to give us as results. And actually, I also want to make it a little bit smaller. So I'm going to set my anchor point of this spark right here. 
press S on the keyboard and lower it to something like 50 and this is going to give me a little bit better results. I'm also going to trim it down a little bit and just offset it so it disappears a little bit quicker and it actually bursts, uh, bursts out a little bit better as well. So there you have these sparks, uh, you can't follow along right now because we didn't release our pack yet, um, but just to give you an idea, it really does add up in the whole design as you can see right here. Uh, so that's basically a short overview, but what you can do as well is also add a new adjustment layer, and right here I'm going to add the ripple effect, ripple right here I'm going to apply this to my adjustment layer and just set my center right here at the point where I'm shooting so also I'm going to click on the keyframe for the center and again frame by frame I'm going to keyframe it in position and after a while you don't need to do it anymore because right here we actually want the ripple to still appear in the same position so uh, what you can do now is play with the height a little bit and with the width and of course the radius and there we go and the width can be a lot bigger we get something like so and maybe not so much height and less width somewhere around here. I'm going to set this at zero and click on the keyframe at the beginning of my blast right here. I'm going to click on the stopwatch for the radius and like right here I'm going to increase it like so and then right here I'm going to set it back to zero. So now if I press U on the keyboard I have keyframes like this. If I'm going to play this back I have something like so. can actually barely see, see it so I'm going to offset this keyframe a little bit more but what you can see is right here we have some black uh, issues right here so I'm going to click on my effects so I'm going to search for motion tile in my effects and presets and just put it on top of my ripple effect and right here click on mirror the edges and for the height only I'm going to set this at 120 and that's going to resolve that issue right there and also for the speed of our ripple effect for your phase right here we can also play around with that so go to the beginning keyframe for the ripple phase and then move forward right here and just increase it a little bit press u on the keyboard and just offset that single keyframe to the end of this yeah of the of your radius and now we have something like this it's very subtle but it does add up and you can actually put this in front of your flare right here we actually want to warp just myself right here and not all these sparks so this looks a little bit better all right so looking pretty good and what I'm going to do now is click on my footage hold control and press D on the keyboard to duplicate my footage and I'm also going to trim this down and so I only have this part and then like right here I'm also going to trim this part down so now I have this portion of my footage and I'm going to set it to add then I'm going to pick my um, then I'm going to pick my pen tool right here and I'm going to draw something like this to give my reflection of the blast. Press F on the keyboard once you have made your mask and just feather it out a little bit like so. And go to the beginning, press T on the keyboard for the opacity, move one frame forward. Maybe one well, right here we can still keep it at 100. And then right here we want it to be something like zero and now we have a short reflection burst on ourselves you can click on our footage and go to effect color correction curves and also add some blue color in ourselves so it actually looks like it's reflection of our muzzle flesh and it's actually really subtle that I'm not sure if you actually need it because I don't really see the reflection um, but yeah it's just an option if you have like less flare uh, you might actually notice it. But yeah, this is the result of our sci-fi gun blast. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, give it a like and also subscribe to the channel for more. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.